If you're one of those who doesn't have all of your servers and infrastructure in Azure, then good on you. You should probably not be putting all of your eggs in one basket anyway. And sometimes you need to have stuff out there on the edge. But that doesn't mean that you can't use a lot of the great management and security features of Azure, because that's where Azure Arc comes into the picture. It doesn't matter if you have servers running on VMware in Google Cloud, AWS, or if you have Kubernetes clusters somewhere, a SQL server that you want to manage in Azure, Azure Arc can be used in all of these scenarios. Heck, you can even manage VMware vSphere environments. Keen observers might have noticed that I did not mention Hyper-V, more on that later on. One of the benefits of using Azure Arc include the option to deploy Azure VM extensions on non-Azure VMs. That means that you can make use of things like the Log Analytics extension to grab logs and ship them up to Azure. You can use VM Insights to analyze the performance of the VM and so on. So let's dive a little deeper into what Azure Arc can do, what works, pricing, and of course, we also have to cover limitations. Sound good? Cool. So Azure Arc has been around for a while now, since 2019 actually, but lately it has gotten a whole lot of love from Microsoft in terms of development of the service. It's really come a long way from that first public preview that was pretty much just installing an agent on the server to have it pop up in the Azure portal. At its core, Azure Arc provides Azure management of stuff that's not hosted in Azure. What management in this sense entails does vary a bit depending on what you are using Arc to manage, but that's the essence of Azure Arc. Let's first take a look at what this means for servers before we move on to Kubernetes, SQL, VMware, and Virtual Machine Manager before jumping on to pricing limitations and so on. So for servers, Azure Arc gives you a lot of the same admin experience as you would get with a regular old Azure VM, and Arc supports both Windows and Linux, virtual or physical. When you install the Arc agent, or Azure Connected Machine agent, on a server, it will pop up in the Azure portal, and from there you can do the standard Azure stuff like setting tags, setting up access control for the Azure object, not the server itself, and viewing the activity log. But you can also use things like Azure Policy to audit settings within the operating system, use Defender for Cloud to do threat detection, vulnerability management, and just monitoring for any potential security threats. You can use Azure Automation to do things like change tracking and use the server in runbooks to run PowerShell Python scripts. You can do update management and use Azure AutoManage, use VM Insights to monitor dependencies and performance, and of course, ship logs from the server to a log analytics workspace, which in turn allows you to also integrate with Microsoft Sentinel for correlation of security events with other data sources. So as you can see, you really do get a lot of cool stuff you can do with your Arc enabled servers. But if your Arc enabled server is also running SQL Server, then you can install the SQL Server extension to get some insights in your SQL instance and protect it with Microsoft Defender. You can also Arc enable Kubernetes clusters, which is equally cool because then you can use Azure Monitor, Azure Policy, Defender, and so on on your Kubernetes cluster, no matter where it's running. And also, GitOps can be used on your Arc enable Kubernetes cluster and you can use your Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster as a custom location in Azure. That means that you can deploy Azure services like app services, functions, event grid, and more on your own Kubernetes clusters. For example, the one you have running in AWS. Now I kind of teased in the intro that Hyper-V is not supported and that's true. Like with standalone VMware servers, you cannot directly onboard them to Azure, but a pretty new addition to Azure Arc is that you now can Arc enable VMware vSphere, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, and Azure Stack HCI. All three of these features are currently in preview. They give you pretty much the same features and are configured in the same way. Feature-wise, they give you basic management of your vSphere Virtual Machine Manager or Azure Stack HCI environments. You can browse your resources like network storage VMs, onboard VMs to Azure Arc, and perform basic VM tasks like uh, starting and stopping, creating and deleting VMs. Okay, so that's all the great stuff that Azure Arc gives you and what it can do. We still have pricing limitations and how it works in the setup process to cover, but I guess it's fitting to jump to how it works in the setup process now. To, to kind of condense that whole topic into one sentence, Azure Arc works by you setting up an agent of some kind that in turn communicates to Azure. That's the simplest explanation. And I said to Azure because that's kind of a key thing with Azure Arc. You don't have to expose whatever you are Arc enabling because it's all outbound traffic from your Arc enabled thing. 
which is a good thing security wise. It does communicate encrypted across public internet by default, but you can utilize private endpoints to force traffic across VPNs or express routes, thus never crossing over public internet. To arc enable servers and SQL, you go through a short wizard in the actual portal that provide you with a PowerShell script or bash that you need to run on the server you want to arc enable. That script installs the Azure connected machine agent and configures it to connect to your Azure environment. Once that is done, your server should be visible in the Azure portal and you can go nuts with it. For Kubernetes clusters to be arc enabled, you start off the same way. You run a wizard and get a script that you need to run. That script deploys a bunch of agents in your Kubernetes cluster. And with a little bit of magic, your Kubernetes cluster should appear in the Azure portal. Keep in mind that should you choose to arc disable your Kubernetes cluster, you really should do that via the command line, else those agents will remain in your cluster. Now for vSphere, Virtual Machine Manager and Azure Stack HCI. Like I said earlier, they are configured the same way. That is that you deploy a virtual appliance called Azure Arc Research Bridge that in turn handles communication with vCenter, Virtual Machine Manager or the Azure Stack. Again, short wizard in the portal will end up providing you with a script needed for all this. In regards to this topic, I also want to point out that Microsoft has created what they call ArcBox, which is a sandbox environment that you can deploy to Azure, and it contains pretty much everything Arc has to offer. So if you're looking to learn, check that out. So that leaves us with two more topics, pricing and limitations. And let's quickly do the limitations first. There are region constraints for Arc. vSphere and Virtual Machine Manager, for example, is only available in East US and West Europe. I know those features are in preview, but even the true and tested and GA Arc enabled servers feature is not available in regions like Canada East, Norway East, Australia Central, and so on. So if you have a need to use only specific regions, make sure that yours is listed as having Arc services available. Larger vSphere and Virtual Machine Manager environments are not supported. And by larger, I mean more than 2,500 VMs in vCenter and more than 3,500 VMs in Virtual Machine Manager. You can also only have up to 5,000 Arc enabled servers in a single resource group. Why you would want more, I cannot fathom. Simply deleting an Arc-enabled Kubernetes cluster from the Azure portal does not remove the agents. I mentioned it earlier, but I feel it's worth repeating. The Azure Connected Machine does not support ARM-based architecture. It also doesn't support every Linux distro out there, so make sure that yours is on the list. Apart from that, there are, of course, features that I feel is missing especially with the vSphere and Virtual Machine Manager preview, but those are previews, and I know that there is a lot on the roadmap for Azure Arc. As for pricing, Azure Arc has its own prices, but keep in mind that every Azure service you throw on top of your Arc-enabled stuff has their own prices as well. That will be things like Defender, Sentinel, and so on. But the pricing for Azure Arc itself is relatively straightforward. For Arc enabled servers, you get the control plane functionality for free, but for each server, there is a cost of $6 per month. Should you opt for features like change tracking, Azure policy, and so on, which I assume you will do if you're looking into Azure Arc. For Arc enabled communities, you get the first six vCPUs for free and an additional vCPU will cost about $2 a month. Technically, you can do Arc enabled Kubernetes for free, but that limits what you actually can do with the cluster to simple things like tagging and stuff in the Azure portal. For Arc enabled SQL, you have the option to go for a general purpose tier or a business critical tier. And with both of these options, you get to choose between using your own existing license, aka hybrid benefit, or to have a license included. Including the license will set you back just over $150 per week or per month for the general purpose, 80 if you're using hybrid benefit, while the business critical tier will set you back just over $430 per week or per month, or just shy of $160 if you're using hybrid benefit. With both the general purpose and the business critical tier, you can save a lot by making use of reservations, which I highly recommend. If you want to learn more about that, check out this video made a while back. As for the rest of the stuff I mentioned, they are in preview, so there's currently no cost. Pricing for stuff like the vSphere and the Virtual Machine Manager, I assume, will come as part of their GA announcement. And with that, I'm ahead out. Cheers.